was no cell phone. There was no Rush Limbaugh. There was no, there was no fax machine. And yet she fought against that. And people suggest that when we have a Republican president, a Republican House, a Republican Senate, a new Supreme Court being ushered in, that we should do something less than protect babies whose beating hearts can be heard? That's absurd. And so with that leadership in mind, Phyllis Schlafly chose, chose as her replacement as president of Phyllis Schlafly's Eagles, a friend of mine named Ed Martin, who flew in today from St. Louis to speak to us today. We're so grateful for you making the trip, Ed, and for all you've done up, this, up to this point to get us here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Janet. Thank you very much. I, I had um, prepared some remarks to, uh, to tell a quick story about how Phyllis Schlafly, late Phyllis Schlafly, when she met with Donald Trump on March 11, 2016, she handed him a copy of the 2012 platform at the Republican Party and said, will you help me make the 2016 platform conservative? And Trump said yes. He honored his word at the convention in 2016. And the Republican Party platform is pro-life, through and through. It's pro-family. It's pro-military superiority. It's the greatest. Phyllis Schlafly said it was the best platform ever. But we have to live up to it. And I think what I was, would have said was that the age of Donald Trump shows that the impossible is possible, just like Phyllis Schlafly taught us. Things that we didn't think even a year or two ago were possible are happening. It's happening whether it's international affairs, the economy, the cultural revolution that was so against us that seems to be turning it towards our side. And on life, we need to be bold, and that's what the heartbeat bill is. But I would have said all that, but instead I want to address Congressman Steve Cohen. Congressman Cohen, at the end of the testimony today, engaged in what is the lowest form of race baiting. It's the lowest form of despicable behavior. He used what is so perfectly entitled a dog whistle for racism. He called an African-American woman who expressed her own opinions on public policy based on her own experience as a black woman who had had an abortion in her life. And he called her a word that has been used by every bigot from this man, Steve Cohen, back to the worst you can think of. He called her ignorant. And he didn't call her ignorant in a private meeting, in a heated moment. He called her in a public meeting with the cameras rolling so that the world could see in the greatest deliberative body, the United States Congress, we have men like Steve Cohen that will use a dog whistle to demean a black woman. I wait for Nancy Pelosi and the left to rise up and to handle Steve Cohen, and we should all wait for him. And when they do, when they address his bigotry, his disrespect for a human person, then we should say, while you're at it, let's talk about the life of the unborn. While you're at respecting Star Parker, who is a American leader and someone who's respected, who has an opinion, then let's talk about how we can do better for the babies and the heartbeat bill. And I hope that that will be a footnote, a very ugly footnote, in this process, but something that's very important and, and uh, incredible to behold. The idea, imagine if a Republican had said that to a woman, to an African American, to anyone. There would have already been massing, you know, protestations and people gathering. And, and so we'll find out quickly, and I look forward to leadership on that. So congratulations to Steve King. Congratulations to these leaders for progress. Janet uh, Porter's leadership is spectacular. And we look forward to saving babies and making America really, really pro-life again. Thank you all.